Tune in Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show. Hear from the doctors that were among the first in the U.S. to merge the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and natural medicines with the advances of modern medical science. Listen to pioneer doctors Varender Sodi, Shalinder, and Anju Sodi to keep up with some of the latest medical advances and learn from some of the true leaders of Ayurvedic medicines every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. with the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show on Day C1250 AM, radio that listens to you. Hi folks, this is Dr. Vrinda Sodi with your favorite show, Your Body is Your Natural Pharmacy. And uh, first of all, I like to give a happy Durga Ashtami day today because this is the Ashtami day. So a lot of people are doing special pujas at their homes and in the temple. Uh, we are also celebrating in Bellevue Hindu Temple here and we'll have an interesting Jagran today. Uh, there's a singer coming from outside too and with our local team. So we'll have some nice... Uh, bhajans and uh, Durga's uh, stutis uh, this evening. So come on in uh, to Balbu Hindu temple if you want to. Uh, also tomorrow is Ram Nami and uh, which is another very auspicious day. And after that is the Vijay Jashmi or the Shara. So I want to give uh, everybody a happy and healthier uh, rest of the years and uh, years to come. Uh, and may God Durga's blessings shower on you. Uh, for wisdom and keeping the darkness away from us. Uh, and today's topic is very interesting. And we are going to talk about gastroesophageal reflux, are commonly known as GERD, G-E-R-D, or also called, uh, called as a reflux disease. And uh, so uh, if you guys have any questions, because this is a very common problem, and uh, a lot of people, almost 60% of the population suffers with it, so you can see that is very, very common. And most every one of us has suffered with this in the past or currently is suffering with it. Uh, it's that common. And so, it's, you know, not everybody should have it all the time. Then it's a big issue. But if you, uh, if you have not experienced it, then maybe, you know, you're missing something out. But this is, you know, if you eat a very spicy food, you feel that burning. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So if you guys have any question, you guys can call me at 84. Four four three zero one one two five zero, and I will be very happy to answer your question. Again, the number is one eight four four three zero one one two five zero. This is a toll-free number, and you can call me. I'll be happy to answer your questions. So, uh, the reflux disease is very very common. As I said earlier, almost uh, sixty percent of the population has suffered with it. In, you know, and uh, uh, also, 20% population in America is currently suffering with chronic GERD disease. And uh, uh, there has been around 216% increase in the patients with GERD diagnosis from 1988 to 2005. So there is not a current statistics available, but I think it may have almost uh, gone into 300% increase. And also... The sad part is that even in children, we are also seeing increase, around 42% increase in the infants, which is just a newly born kids to early age, and 84% increase in the kids from 2 years to 17 years. So you can see this is a very common problem, and almost everybody has suffered with it or having some issues with it right now. And uh, the sad part is that people can also die with the complication of uh, reflux. Uh, some people can just, you know, swallow uh, while they're sleeping in and they can have a pneumonia and they can die, die with it. So around 1,000 plus deaths has happened in, in, in 2004 with this disease. Uh, there are some interesting statistics about it. Uh, we are spending around $14 billion drugs on it to help it, uh, the GERDs and GERD symptoms, although they don't fix anything. Around 50% people with GERD symptoms will have heartburn at night. And uh, so, and they also have uh, difficulty sleeping at night too. So because of the reflux disease. So you can say it can interfere with your normal activity of the daily life. And lots of prescriptions are written for this drug, uh, sorry, this uh, disease. Almost 70 million prescriptions are written and not to count the over-the-counter drugs like your Tums and Mylanta and Melox and your uh, Nexium and all Prevacid, they're all available 
uh, over the counter also. And there is also prescription strength, which is more stronger uh, medications available. So let's uh, look at it, see what is this reflux or what is this gastroesophageal reflux or acid reflux. So basically what happened is that uh, when we eat food, uh, the food goes through the food pipe, which is called esophagus, and it travels to the stomach. And there is a valve there, which actually keeps closed as soon as food enters into the stomach area, that valve closes. And then you start working on it through our acid. Uh, stomach has good amount of acid. Around every healthy person has around one ounce, which is around 30 milliliter of uh, hydrochloric acid uh, present in the stomach area. So it's pretty acidic media in your stomach. And it actually is very essential for us because it helps to digest our food. And uh, so what happened because of certain reasons or mechanical reasons or reasons not known, uh, that valve, the upper valve can get a little leaky. It, so the food comes back and since it has acid, it causes some burning sensation. And so what people will feel that they feel like an acid in their mouth, uh, heartburn, bad breath, chest pain, vomiting, breathing problem, because you can also aspirate that uh, uh, acid into your lungs because the lungs, so the, uh, your uh, uh, windpipe, trachea is just sitting behind the esophagus. So you can regurgitate into your uh, in the, into your uh, windpipe or, or trachea, and you can have a symptom like a pneumonia, a breathing problem. A lot of people with chronic uh, asthma uh, also has a reflux as a disease. And uh, so you can see, and people can also have the teeth uh, staining and uh, the, they can erode the enamel because the uh, stomach contents are acidic. And when it comes uh, to the teeth, uh, it, which is a, has enamel on it and the enamel can be eroded. So you can actually see there is a lot of things can happen with this. And uh, the complications are also very common like esophagitis, uh, the esophageal stricture, uh, which is also accounts for the Barrett's disease, which is actually the cells in the lining start changing and which is a precursor to the cancer. So we can see this can become, you know, really not very uh, fun disease. There is a lot of complication can happen with this whole simple process of uh, not pumping the food downward and keeping the valve open. Uh, so a lot of medications has been also implicated in uh, the reflux. So one of them group is antidepressant, uh, especially alavil, doxepin, imipramine, those drugs, they relax the muscles and so people can have acid coming up. You know. Another drug, which is a uh, group which is called anticholinergic medication, and uh, like phenergan, uh, not used very much these days, but still in use. Uh, asthma medication, especially the theophylline group, uh, which can also uh, the change in the um, motility of the muscle contracting and can cause problem. And uh, then the other group of drugs which can cause the problem is like sedatives, a tranquilizer, for example, Valium or Restoril, they can make or cause the GERD worse. Also, the estrogen, uh, you know, which is very commonly given to the uh, menopausal females uh, or perimenopausal female, and they can also cause the, uh, the uh, reflux or can make it worse. Then there are other medications which are given, for example, like Fosamax. Fosamax is a drug which is given for uh, the osteoporosis or prevention of osteoporosis. In my personal opinion, it doesn't help. Uh, basically, if you look at how it works, it's uh, crazy, then why somebody should use it? In normal healthy person, the body is making bone and it's also destroying the bone, uh, which is a normal process. Everything tends to recycle and body makes a new form of it. So what the Fosamax does, it actually it stops the breakdown of the decaying bone which you should not keep. You don't want to keep the old bone in you. You want to have a new bone. So that process is stopped by Fosamax, and uh, that's how it can help the osteoporosis. But actually, I don't think it's really good help. But on top of it, it can also cause reflux. Potassium supplements, sometimes given for heart patients and also people who uh, do excessive exercise, they also leach out a lot of potassium they, because of sweating. So that can also cause problems. The iron pills were very commonly used over the counter for anemia, 
they can also cause the acid reflux. And then very commonly known antibiotics like doxycycline, tetracycline, and almost any antibiotic will do a big number on your whole digestive system, but also makes the reflux bad. And there is another drug medicine, uh, drug, sorry, which is for heart disease called quinidine, uh, is used for heart and cause problem. And very common group of uh, uh, medicine which is used over the counter, which is called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So your all favorite Motrin and Advil and Aleve, they are famous for creating inflammation in the stomach. And I'm against using these over the counter drugs, especially the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, I was in Florida a couple of um, uh, weeks ago with my son and my daughter-in-law and uh, it was a kind of a little uh, family reunion from my mom, uh, sorry, no, from my wife's side. And uh, uh, the niece of Rekha has a small baby and uh, she had some fever and she went immediately to get some syrup of Tylenol. And I was just looking, so, wow, you know, why you should do it? Because you are creating more problems. So it's very commonly used without even thinking. A lot of uh, folks out there this will jump on taking this kind of medicine very quickly and create problem. Then there are other class of drugs which also causes uh, uh, the reflux and one of them are blood pressure medication and especially calcium channel blockers and beta blockers. So all these drugs can also cause problem for the reflux. Uh, then of course the narcotics, uh, morphine and oxycontin, all those also slow down the digestion process and allow uh, the acid build up and it can regurgitate. So uh, the another thing which can make your GERD worse is smoking. Uh, very common, a lot of people smoke out there and uh, without realizing that they can also interfere with the motility of the intestine and then you have that build up of the acid and the acid comes up and cause the problem. Another very common uh, thing which is used almost everywhere in the world is alcohol. Uh, alcohol is an irritant to the stomach lining and uh, so that can irritate and also causes the uh, the acid reflux. So folks, these are you know some of the things which the drug wise can go wrong for the uh, uh, the reflux. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you can call me at 844-301-1250. Again, the number is 844-301-1250. I'll be very happy to answer your question. So how this is diagnosed? So, you know, one is just from the symptoms, like if you have a heartburn kind of symptoms, you you burping up some acid uh, and you have that bad taste in your mouth. So that's one thing. But if you have chronically stuff going on, uh, if, you know, I encourage my patient to see a gastroenterologist and gastroenterologist may just simply give you a anti-acid pill or say, okay, you want a proton inhibitor. But if you have a chronic issue, I will encourage you to get a special camera is being put into your through your food pipe and that's called endoscopy you're looking into stomach area and uh, your duodenum area the camera is passing through and you're directly viewing through a monitor and that can tell you what's going on with your uh, uh, stomach inside and there are other tests also done you know there is a ph monitoring which you're checking if you're making too much acid and there is another one called the esophageal manometry so these tests are specialized tests which is done by a gastroenterologist and they can certainly make a better diagnosis. And uh, uh, although I may not agree the kind of treatment they can offer to you, because especially the long-term use of these uh, these uh, medications, which we're going to talk about uh, after this break here, uh, is not certainly good. So uh, we will you know, take a little short break here. If you want to call me, call me at 844-301-1250. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. 
If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma Treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. So folks, uh, we're talking about gastroesophageal reflux disease or commonly known as a reflux disease, acid reflux disease. Uh, so one of the complications of reflux disease is Barrett's disease. In this disease, the cell lining of the intestine changes, and that is uh, is a very concern because why is concerned because also people who has a Barrett disease are prone to esophageal cancers. So which is not good. Any type of GI cancer, especially esophageal and stomach cancer, can be very fatal and it can kill people very fast. So uh, so if you have those symptoms, I think certainly needs to be seen by a gastroenterologist and make sure that they uh, put, and they, sometimes they when they put the camera in, they see some suspicious lesion in there, they take a piece, uh, which is, uh, and they send it for biopsy. And then you look at the what kind of cell are looking, if they are bad cells or good cells. If you don't have a bad cell, uh, you're okay. And they usually the treatment given uh, are anti-acid, proton pump inhibitors, or H2 blockers, which we're going to talk about a little later here. Another complication are uh, people who has a hiatal hernia. So hiatal hernia is a mechanical defect where the the sphincter is not tight and the stomach kind of uh, goes in and uh, uh, and, and the, they can have symptoms like a reflux. And uh, so, which is because of the weak sphincter. If you're more overweight, your chances of uh, uh, getting reflux, uh, acid reflux increases tremendously. So folks out there, don't put on extra weight. And I know it's very easy said than done. Uh, losing weight is not an easy proposition. And uh, and But if you look at it, around 35% of our population is overweight. And uh, that is not helping us. And the obesity has been world epidemic and it is increasing tremendously fast and it is going to have a lot of complications. So I think we have to look at what we are doing wrong. What is the problem which we are uh, not trying to focus on and why we're getting so obese. So obesity is a direct link to reflux disease, acid reflux disease. And there is another disease called Gillinger allison syndrome, which is uh, basically you have too much acidity in the stomach. And if you also take high amounts of calcium, uh, certain calcium, like calcium citrate, is very acidic, and some people get problem because of that. But also, it increases a hormone called gastrin, and which leads to the acidity again. And there are other diseases which are, are sclerotic disease, or scleroderma, which is an autoimmune disease, uh, where the uh, motility, the movement of your esophagus, is uh, not proper, and it can cause a problem. Another drug which is very commonly used, which I did not talk earlier, just came to my mind right now, is steroids. Uh, your prednisolone, dexamethasone. A lot of people are out there for asthma, for uh, ulcerative colitis, uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia. It's also used for as an acute inflammation suppressant for almost every kind of inflammation. If you really need to suppress it, the steroids are given they also make you uh, more prone to reflux kind of diseases. And then there are, you know, uh, other diseases where the stomach is actually sunken in and that can cause some uh, problem there too with the reflux. So you can see that, you know, there are a lot of factors which can involve in reflux. Uh, also, people who has apnea, uh, sleep apnea, uh, they also get more reflux. Uh, people who has a gallstones or uh, gallbladder disease also has issues with it. Another interesting uh, fact about the uh, reflux disease is that people who have a reflux disease, around almost 40% of them has a special kind of bacteria, which is called H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter pylori is a bacteria uh, which uh, can live in the acidic uh, uh, environment of the stomach and cause the irritation and inflammation. So there is actually, you know, in the beginning when the Helicobacter was 
uh, found by a veterinary in Australia, and he uh, kind of uh, related that people who has gastritis or reflex kind of diseases, uh, they, this is because of this bacteria, and this bacteria uh, then was linked to it, and the treatment was antibiotic. But what happened, people who got antibiotic, they actually have more reflux uh, kind of issues. And uh, so it is not shown that treating this H. pylori, and uh, according to many studies now available, that almost all population in the world has been exposed to H. pylori. And it was more common in older days when we were actually uh, you know, depositing our feces on the ground because it was you know, uh, coming in contact with us. And some people think this is good because it boosts up your immune system. So uh, the not final uh, version is yet available. And uh, but uh, I think uh, personally, I believe that you know if you have lived with this kind of infection for a long time and it's not in acute form, uh, it may be okay because the body does get some stimulation from different kind of bacteria and bugs. So let's talk about some treatment options in uh, uh, allopathic medicine we have for this one. And uh, the n w number one is antiacid. So the antiacids are like uh, your my Melox and Mylanta or Gelucil, uh, Rolades and Tums. So some of them are aluminum compounds, some of them are calcium compounds, and uh, they are given uh, to help calm it down. So it doesn't fix the problem, by the way. It gives you temporary relief, but overuse certainly will cause lots of side effects, especially as a diarrhea and constipation. It also interferes with the absorption of nutrient because you're changing the pH, the acidity of the stomach. And the acidic stomach is very important, by the way. It is one of the most important thing for the proper digestion of the food. So when we are changing with any form of this medication, it's not the best one. And most of the time we need to find the root cause, what is causing it, rather than just jumping onto the treatment. Uh, then there are other kinds of medication which are called H2 receptor blockers. So in this one, the acid production is reduced. So those are like uh, Zantac, the drug Tagamet, uh, Pepsid AC. Uh, they are almost all available over the counter. Also and also they are in prescription strength too. And but what they do, they reduce the production of acid. Again, personally, I don't think that's the best way of treating it either. But if you need for a couple of days, that should be okay. But if you're using it every day popping it every day, there is a, you need to understand the picture, what is going on with you. Another form of drug which is used for uh, uh, reflux disease is called proton pump inhibitors. So basically, as the name suggests, they stop the production of acid. And uh, so these drugs are like Nexium, uh, Prevacid, and uh, Proteinix, and Prilosec, all those, you know, uh, SFX, those are different, different forms, the different names for different uh, proton pump inhibitors. Again, everything comes with a lots of side effects. So there was actually a paper published uh, in the Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology in 2030, very nicely done by uh, David Johnson and Edward Oldfield. And uh, so they were actually trying to look at that what is the data there and what it does with the uh, giving long-term effect of these anti-acid drugs, uh, proton pump inhibitors on the people. So what they find out that uh, uh, it affects the absorption of minerals and vitamins. And number one was iron. So people who are, because iron needs a acidic uh, media to absorb. And if you don't have acidic media, you're not gonna absorb iron and you become anemic. So you're not helping your whole body. Second is calcium absorption. Again, same thing, because the, you need kind of ionization of the calcium to absorb the calcium. And if you're not ionizing the calcium with acidic material, you are not going to absorb it properly. So uh, that was also not good. The another one, which is uh, go hands and gloves with calcium, is magnesium. Very important, utilized by the body in many different forms. Uh, almost more than 200 processes needed magnesium in the body. And it's a very relaxing kind of uh, uh, mineral. And that also get interfered and you don't absorb it properly and you cause a problem with it. The another one, which is very common with this uh, uh, B12 uh, deficiency, and a uh, lot of vegetarian out there, by the way, are already low in B12. Because you get B12 from the animal protein, and uh, you also get B12 by eating 
a bug laden fruits vegetables and grain so in our society we have so much chemicals we have so many pesticide we have so many uh, insecticide that we have almost killed all those bugs out there and when we kill those bugs so those bugs are not present as much in our food our food was never supposed to be clean 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 so those bugs have the highest amount of b12 so we are not you know utilizing that form of uh, food these days and we are getting a problem with the b12 so if you're vegetarian you already b12 low if you're taking antacid if you're taking proton pump inhibitor if you're taking this h2 receptor blockers you are getting be more b12 deficiency so when people has a b12 deficiency they feel fatigue the number one symptom is they just completely fatigue and if you draw the blood they show a special kind of anemia which is called pernicious anemia and when you draw the levels for b12 they are low and uh, very very bad so not a good combination again uh the another thing it can also these uh, proton pump inhibitors can interfere with the uh, drugs absorption and especially the plavix uh, uh, plavix is a blood thinner which is given to people who has a uh heart a um, stenting done or heart disease you know, plavix as a given as a blood thinner and it can interfere with that one so again not a good if you taking this medication and you taking proton pump inhibitors you can have problem so i think a, you should be aware of it but your doctor should also tell you that if you taking proton pump inhibitor and you taking this drugs blood thinning drugs you can have a problem with it so they may have to monitor how thin is your blood or uh, we can do some testing to check it out uh the there's another interesting fact about the proton pump inhibitors several studies have shown that people who take these the proton pump inhibitors are commonly called a ppis or protein proton pump inhibitors they have more chances of getting pneumonia so uh again you know pneumonia is a serious disease and if especially you're in the younger age and the older age that can be very serious and it can cause death so not a good again uh, place to be in if you have a in the older or in the younger stages uh the another thing which is very disturbing uh the gastric juices especially the acid is very important in protecting us from many different kind of bacteria and uh, one of the bacteria which is called clostridium difficile which is also uh, called nosocomial infection or in a short term the infection given by the hospitals because the uh, the hospital has a lot of these uh, resistance bacteria floating around and when you stay in the hospital uh, and you give antibiotics you develop a wrong type of bacteria which is called clostridium difficile and it causes a lot of problem with diarrhea and some people can have blood with in their stools and it can kill you so it is really dangerous people can go into malabsorption i've seen many patients with it who has been not been helped uh, with the standard medical care uh, and uh, fortunately they got help from us and which was good but uh, the people who are on these proton pump inhibitors on long term they are more prone to this c, c difficile so again uh, you can actually because this can change the gut bacteria just look at it mother nature has its own way of making things happen uh our body make natural acid and we make enzymes we make all sort of things the zillions of things we do at the same time every second there are zillions of processes happening in the body and if we are interfering with that mechanism we are going to do something wrong so the ecosystem get disturbed and these bacteria like clostridium difficile will pop in and will create more problem so uh, we'll continue our uh, discussion on reflux uh, as uh, we come back after this break and the number to call is 8443011250 uh, again the number is 8443011250 punch karma detox treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body our clinic in bellevue washington offers over 36 years experience in ayurvedic treatment call us for more information about our punch karma treatments at 425-453-8022 that's 425-453-8022 
If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. So as we are discussing the reflux and the the drug treatment and the proton pump inhibitor for especially, what kind of complications it have? And as I said earlier, when you take these proton pump inhibitors on a long-term basis, it's going to change the acidity of your gut. And when you change the acidity, there is a huge number of bacteria inside us. And I've spoken on this program many times that we have around 100 trillion cells in our body and we have around 1,000 trillion bacteria in our body. So you can see for every cell in the body, there is 10 bacteria. And so the huge number of these bacteria are living in our gut. Almost 90% of the bacteria uh, live in large intestine and then less, uh, around 10% live in the small intestine area. So our intestines are the warehouse of these good bacteria and they are working in harmony. It's like an ecosystem, like, you know, you have the plants, you have the animals, you have the grasses, you have all kind of different, they're all working with each other. And uh, they some of them becoming food chain, like our food chain is we eat animals and fish and we also eat the, uh, fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and grasses and uh, all those kind of stuff. So when we are disturbing that balance, we are going to create a problem. So the acid is reduced or blocked and you can have different kind of bacteria. So there is a diarrhea which is called traveler's diarrhea or when people travel, they get diarrhea. So long-term use has been associated with the traveler's diarrhea again. Uh, again, not the best one. Uh, you got a you know more problem when you're using antacid. And I have seen so many people. Some of them are 15, 10 years on proton pump inhibitors, or some of them are five years. So if you are using it more than a couple times, uh, you know, sorry, uh, more than two, three weeks, or maybe at the most one month, I think you're not helping your system. Yes, short and sweet use is okay, but you need to come and see what is causing it what we can do to help that process. And I will tell you some of other things after we finish with the side effects list here, which is long. And then another one, which has been, you know, uh, uh, in the same line is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So again, as I said, the small intestine doesn't have a lot of bacteria, but still have a lot of bacteria in numbers. Uh, And so with the change in the acidity of your upper digestive tract, you are going to grow the bacteria which are not very friendly for your intestine. And so when you grow these bacteria, people have lots of problems. They get gas and diarrhea, malabsorption. People feel sick all the time. They lose weight. And I've seen so many people with uh, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth are in short, they call SIBO. Uh, And uh, they are also given antibiotics, uh, very strong antibiotic to kill, which is usually have not seen a great help with either. So again, I think you need to consider if you're on PPIs and you're having these symptoms, you need to look at what you can do. And uh, there is another more serious, which is called uh, peritonitis, which is the inflammation of your uh, tummy area and the layers in that uh, uh, your uh, your digestive system and can cause problem. And again, there is another one uh, which is uh, very been reported in several cases has been reported is the interstitial nephritis. So which is basically uh, your bladder lining get inflamed. And I've seen many patients with interstitial nephritis. It's also autoimmune disease, which is... Uh, uh, so basically, what's I think going on is you're not helping your digestion properly and you're making those inflammatory molecules. And these inflammatory molecules, whenever you get inflammatory molecules, body is trying to react to it. So you react in many different ways and you can attract different kind of bacteria uh, or you can also inflame the body in a different way. So you start attacking, which is the autoimmune response. 
So you can see that there's a lot of uh, these kind of, uh, uh, you know, things can happen uh, because we can have a more complicated. And then a lot of people out there are taking drugs like methotrexate for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, for cancer or, or uh, autoimmune diseases. So when you combine the methotrexate and proton pump inhibitors, there is also a relationship and it has a problem with elimination because methotrexate is very toxic drug. It's a chemotherapy drug. It's a cancer drug. And when you're not getting rid of from your body, uh, you can have a problem with that too. So, you know, you can see there is a, it comes with a slew of uh, side effects and uh, which does not help. And also interesting thing is the, as I said earlier, that uh, reflux or uh, GERD causes the esophageal cancer. But if you take long-term use of these uh, drugs, uh, especially over-the-counter drug, which has been also associated with esophageal cancer. So, wow, that's not good. And because of the minerals and the calcium deficiency and magnesium deficiency, you also end up having a uh, weak bones. Uh, so you can uh, be more prone to osteoporosis. And especially if you're a small structure female, you're a thin lady, uh, and you have a history of osteoporosis, you should be very cautious about using the proton pump inhibitors and other drugs uh, to uh, for the benefit of the uh, reflux disease. So, okay, what kind of food can cause your reflux worst? So again, you know, I have seen this is uh, very common that uh, uh, the reflux is caused by some kind of food sensitivities. Uh, I see it a lot with the spicy food, especially people, uh, if you uh, eating too hot sp uh, spices like cayenne pepper, bell peppers. Uh, we, we special have a, a family called nightshade family in that is potato, tomato, bell pepper, uh, eggplant kind of stuff. And the, the people who are sensitive they will get more reflux disease, uh, acid reflux disease with these kind of uh, you know, vegetables. And uh, there are also fruits, especially the citrus family, which is oranges and tangerines and grapefruit kind of stuff. Uh, they can also increase the chances of getting heartburn and reflux. And the tomato is another one, which a lot of people love. And I love tomato myself too. But people who are sensitive, which is also a nightshade plant, by the way, uh, you can have problem with that too. So you can actually enhance the um, complication of a reflux. Uh, another one is your cheese. You know, a lot of cheese are, uh, with the, especially the fungus-based cheese, like those blue cheese and all those kind of stuff can create problem. Even some people bother with the dairy product, period, like uh, milk and, you know, the cheeses and the butter. Uh, nuts, certain nuts causes problem too. Uh, avocado and uh, if you're eating like a very cooked meat uh, over the grill, uh, which is kind of uh, not good for you. It will cause problem too. I as already said about alcohol. Alcohol may you know because it irritant uh, to the stomach lining and uh, it will cause a problem. So your one glass of wine may be not the best thing. And on top of especially wine and beer has a lot of uh, yeast in them. And when they have yeast, you are also changing the flora because yeast is a normal flora in the intestine. But when you have too much, it causes a problem. So a lot of people out there has a candida in them, have a yeast overproduction. And thanks to our overindulgence in sugar, and then on top of we are given antibiotic at least once or twice a year. And then we may get a, a steroid or we may get an anti-inflammatory drug. Combination of all those things just make it you know worse combination and we end up having a problem. Uh, caffeine is another you know trigger of a uh, uh, this uh, heartburn and reflux. Chocolate, you know, a lot of people love, and I love chocolate too, by the way, but I do overindulge it. So I bring the darkest chocolate you can get, which is not very sweet. And I consume one square, small square, almost like a uh, one inch uh, per day, which is healthier. It's good for your brain. But if you have issues, uh, then it's not going to be the best one for you. So you need to make sure that, you know, you want to avoid this kind of food. They will not help you. Another very commonly used uh, uh, stuff in our culture and actually all over the world now is carbonated beverages, You're all the sodas. So actually it's interesting. A lot of people use sodas to suppress the, uh, the acid symptoms, but it actually make it worse. 
So it may give you very temporary relief, but then after that, it actually causes more problem. So you can see that a lot of foods can be a trigger. And a lot of times I do when people are, you know, with this taking these drugs for many times, I do food sensitivity testing on them. I also check the, them for Helicobacter pylori and uh, also do the stool analysis and see if there is a bacteria overgrowth going on. Uh, and there is also test for uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth where you can, uh, they blow the air and you check for the methane levels in them. So once you have all those tests available, then you make a program for it. Uh, to how to fix that and what you can do to help this whole process. Again, folks, you know, you the emotions are very powerful uh, drug and also disease causing. A lot of people who are angry out there, they are not helping their process. Uh, the more angry you are, the more problematic it is for you because you are going to have issue with you and you are going to uh, create a problem for you and uh, you are not... Uh, uh, going to be a, in the best of uh, your health. So I think the anger is a bad thing, is a bad energy to have. And when you are suppressing, you're really suppressing anger, that's also bad for you. But not only suppressed anger, but when you throw somebody a, a fireball, he's going to throw a fireball at you. And we end up having a kind of a you know fight here. And uh, that fight uh, ends up... Uh, making you more angry and more frustrated and you make a lot of angry molecules which is going to disturb your gastric uh, lining too so this is uh, you know really interesting that you know if you're not uh, helping your whole process uh, then you know certainly you needed to uh, make sure that you don't get, get angry and you can do simple processes talk it out you know see uh, what you can uh, uh, you know what you can do to help that process of anger you can do breathing exercise, yoga, you know, and uh, maybe taking a console, uh, which would be help to help that process too. There is a lot of uh, data available lately on your emotions and uh, your uh, body's uh, uh, reactivities. Uh, what you uh, you know, what you will go into uh, with all those reactions uh, when you are going in in frustrated state or in angry state, what it does to your system. So, folks, we're gonna take another short break here and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we will be continuing our discussion after we come back from this short break. And uh, we will uh, we'll be talking about what you can do at home and what kind of things you can do to help your acid reflux. And uh, if you have any questions, you can call me at 844-301-1250. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma Treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. So folks, uh, we're talking about gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about what you can do at home to help this whole process. And uh, if you have a, this ongoing issue, I certainly want you to see it a specialist and get it diagnosed because I don't want to have a serious issues there. But I see a lot of people who has been through that route and they're not been helped because the treatment protocol is standard. You're given proton pump inhibitor or anti-acid or uh, the acid uh, reducers, uh, which has a limited help uh, in a long-term way. So, but if you have occasional stuff, you can do something at home too. Very simple old remedy is like a baking soda. If you have that uh, little reflux, they put a little bit of half teaspoon of baking soda in the uh, water and drink it. That will subside the reflux uh, immediately. But I don't want you to do it every day because that is you're also changing the pH of it. 
uh, but because I wanted to fix the problem. I don't want to just s- fix a symptom. Uh, that's the problem with our medicine today. We are more into fixing the symptoms rather than fixing the disease itself. Yeah, so basically, you know, it, it is, uh, we can take it occasionally if you need it, but if you have a long-term issue, certainly need to see a specialist. The another thing which is very healthy and very good for you is aloe vera juice. It's available. Uh, Sometimes I also encourage them to get an organic plant of aloe vera, cut the leaf off, remove the skin. Skin is very bitter, although it's not, I don't mind bitter things, uh, but some people don't like it. And you can get the gel out of it and you can suck on it or eat it. It's an amazing healing property on the gastric mucosa and it's very non-toxic. It's not going to help, uh, sorry, not going to change anything. Actually, if anything, it helps the whole body. Sometimes just uh, chewing gum helps it. You know, you can have a chewing gum, uh, which is also have the reflex, but these are, you know, again, small fix type of stuff there. Uh, another thing is what, what I like is ginger. Ginger is amazing remedy and it's also non-toxic and you can use it for a long time too. And uh, basically uh, you can grate a ginger, have a boiling water and throw the ginger in there, strain it and sip slowly on it. Or you can also suck on the ginger piece uh, slowly, slowly. And you can ask, wow, it's spicy. But yes, it is spicy, but you'll see you get immediate results with the uh, reflux disease. Similarly, there is another uh, plant which is called Galanga, which is also in the same family as ginger. If you go to Thai place, uh, they put in a tum yum soup. Uh, it's like, it looks like a ginger root, but has a kind of different kind of aroma to it. And that also has a very similar effect to ginger. Uh, another thing which you can simply do at home is eat a banana. Uh, banana has a lot of pectin in it, which is a kind of soothing effect. It will remove the acid. Similarly, apple has a lot of pectin in it, so it actually remove the heartburn very, very quickly. Uh, so, you know, one other thing is you need to stop smoking because if you're smoking, uh, you're not going to get better. And uh, again, you're adding on to the trouble if you're taking proton pump inhibitors. And if you're not uh, uh, looking at it, you're causing more problem because your heart is going to be crazy. And people who smoke, they also drink heavily. And now you're taking a proton pump on an inhibitor on top of it, you're asking for more trouble. So folks out there who loves to smoke or drink, listen to me carefully. I've lost my dad to the cancer. And if anything I can do, even stop one person from going that route, I'll be happy to do that because that is a deadly combination. And uh, smoking kills more people and also it causes the reflux. So please stay away from it and any help you can get, you should get out there to get and uh, stop the smoking. Uh, maintain a healthy weight. And again, it's a very easy to uh, easy said than done because out there, uh, we have a lot of issues with the overweight. But also, there are many factors, but one of them is caloric intake. Uh, look at a soda bottle, for example. Uh, we have 1.5 liter soda bottles. But if you go to the Hispanic uh, uh, areas, uh, like in Yakima, the soda bottle is three liter bottle there. And you look at the sizes of these people. They are more overweight people there than in, in our uh, Seattle area because just the, sh- the amount of calories you're putting in the system and also excessive cheese uh, eating, and, uh, heavy caloric diet and lack of exercise will make you more fat. And the more fatter you get, the more reflux you get. So maintain a healthy weight. It's very simple. Eat according to the season. Do some exercises. And don't want to lose weight before the marriage. You know, like, a, okay, my I see that a lot of those patients come to me. Dr. Sodi, next month, my niece is getting married. And I need to lose 30 pounds weight right away. Folks, when you do that, you're going to gain 60 pounds back again. So you lose 30 pounds, you're going to gain 60 pounds. Because you're doing a crash dieting. Yes, you're going to lose weight. But then after that, you are going to put that back because now your system is getting used to a low metabolic rate and you're not burning those kind of uh, calories which you were burning previously. So make it a long-term goal, maybe one year, two year goal. And if you're losing even a one half pound a week, I'm happy with it. If you're losing only one to two pounds a month, I'm still happy with it. I'm not happy gaining one to two pounds a month. I'm happy to lose one to two pounds a month. And if you have 
say 40 pounds the way to go it may take one to two years to go but that is the way to do it otherwise you are going to be i what i call uh, my favorite expression is prune and plum so you become like a shriveled up and then you gain and you become like a prune again and that is one of the worst thing which you can do to your system your body will have a more problem with your heart and your lungs and your uh, digestive system everywhere sometime you know taking some almonds also helps it too and we so if patient come to with the reflux so what i do so i think what we need, what i do is first of all i take a detailed history and a lot of these people who are taking these uh, private said there is a tons of literature written on it lately there has been fda warnings on it and uh, uh, people are worried about it uh, for starting from your heart disease to even some uh, patient with a cancer because uh, the esophageal cancer increases and on top of other things which we just discussed earlier so patient comes to me i take a detailed history see what is their lifestyle uh, if they exercising or not if they uh, they love their martini or their vodka or their wine or their uh, beer and a lot of time people think that beer and wine is okay uh, with the reflux and not realizing that beer and wine has a lot of yeast in them and when you taking this yeast in your system your system is getting overgrowth of yeast and if you have a majority of people out there already has yeast overgrowth so you you like your candy you like your chocolate uh, in excess amount you like your some indian dessert like a lot of indian patients uh, they say oh don't eat too much I just have one piece of rasgulla or gulab jamun or one burfi uh, guys even that one rasgulla has around 15 to 20 teaspoon of sugar in it so that is lot more that's the one week quota worth of sugar for you so which is you know you need to watch that one so then i you know uh, do their food sensitivity testing and uh, the food sensitivity uh, is done by drawing a blood and you send it to the lab and then also check if they have a helicobacter pylori which is another breath test then also check for uh, uh, the sibo small intestinal bacterial overgrowth so now we are looking at all the aspects which is leading to it are there any chronic non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs like aleve or ibuprofen uh, are they uh, you know they are on uh, other drugs like chemotherapy drug methotrexate uh, are they on prednisolone uh, all those data is taken so because we're trying to fix what is causing this whole stuff uh, and so once we have that one also i check uh, the stool and there are specialized test basically you looking at it what are the ratios of different good bacteria and bad bacteria and what kind of bad bacteria is growing in your intestine so these are very specialized tests and uh, it's not only checking for ova and parasite because that does not uh, uh, the answer the whole question either so when we have all those stuff now we make a plan for you the plan is again simple you change the food which is causing problem to you so you avoid those food which is causing problem and the major culprits are nightshade family like a tomato potato bell pepper eggplant type of stuff citrus family alcohol uh coffee uh, even green tea by the way you know i love green tea myself but uh, there is a dr shinya he is the one first doctor who actually put the camera inside the colon and he has done almost uh, uh, you know 300000 uh, uh, colonoscopy in his lifetime and he has mentioned in his book that uh, when he saw people who drank too much caffeine caffeinated drink and especially also green tea his, their linings of intestines are not very healthy either so you can actually prone so green tea should be also in moderation not too much and uh, uh, people like me who love to drink very hot hot green tea that's also problematic so you want to you know want to look at that too if you're doing that one and then there are lots of other remedies which you can be done uh licorice is phenomenally good herb used in ayurvedic medicine for centuries to help the process and dgl is very over the counter available that can be utilized there is another uh, herb which is called shatavari also th- since we talked about bacterial overgrowth and the bacterial changes in your gut probiotics can be very very helpful for uh, controlling the symptom uh, walking breathing exercise i encourage people to walk every day because walking is a phenomenally good exercise for almost everything every disease and it calms you your an- anger get less and you feel more refreshed so uh, folks out there uh, this is you know is not difficult to get control of your reflux you have to do simple normal daily thing like walking 
eating healthier, stop smoking, no alcohol, and getting a good sleep. Sleep is very, very important. So if you do all these simple things, you will cut down your reflux tremendously and uh, rest, uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, week and uh, have fun. And again, happy Navratras and Durgashtami and uh, Dasara. I will talk to you next week again. Have a wonderful day.